I want a bounty. So this is another revid on this wee uh, shunt resistor concept that uh, I did a previous video for and links in the description. So if you watched the previous video there, you see me waffling on about this thing here. And, uh, okay, um, made this myself, made it out of bits and pieces that I had land about, those things there. But I do recommend that you would use a resistor, something like that. So what this is, is a very low value resistor. This, uh, these three in parallel, uh, add up to just under, or just over one ohm, about 1.1 ohm or something like that. But I think I'm going to make another one and uh, maybe have it about half an ohm. So I had uh, a wee hobby box about the place and a few resistors. So I demonstrated in the last video what the idea of this is. The idea of this is then is so you can measure low amounts of current with a voltmeter. Therefore allowing you to use a scope as well. So you're measuring voltage, you're measuring the voltage drop across this resistor with this in circuit. So this is in circuit. So you might think to yourself, why don't you just use a low amp current clamp or something like that? Well, the problem with that is that whenever you're measuring current that is very, very low, it tends to, you know, fluctuate all over the shop. And uh, if you don't zero your current clamp, what's that on? Wrong one. So that's on DC there, and it's reading 0.36. So you're forever having to zero this. And if you're in amongst other wires and there's a there's magnetic fields about the place, this will jump all over the shop. So you'll get sort of false readings. Whenever you're trying to measure low current, now low amounts of current, so we're talking, you know, milliamps in single figures, you know, maybe 20 milliamps. So I demonstrated that in the last video with a parasitic drain. Uh, well, my car didn't have a parasitic drain, but... Uh, I demonstrated the concept of it. So this is this is another concept video. This is going to demonstrate if you have like a break in a wire or something like that. So if you have a circuit, and here's it, we're going to make a very, very simple circuit, which is a 501 side light bulb. And this bulb is 12 volts, 5 watt rated. So if you work that out, uh, that should take about 4 amps or thereabouts so we'll just wang our power supply on here and there's 12 volts and bulbs fill it at the 0.36 of an amp so that is internal amps through the uh vantage pro there and you can see that reflected here as well so that's a that's another ammeter there so that's reading 349, that's milliamps. I can flick that over and give you it there as well. 0.34 of an amp. So it's just less than what the, the 5 watt rating is. But there are losses, uh, especially in bulbs, whenever you know the resistance changes, whenever the thing heats up and stuff. So what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to attempt to try and sort of demonstrate where this type of measuring could be, could be useful in troubleshooting in a car and uh you know we all have problems with the green crusties bad connections breaks and wires and stuff like that you might find this useful so a wee 501 side light bulb is just being held in the vase there so it's, it's, there's no significance to the vase there and it's connected uh to this power supply via this uh shunt resistor which is just over an ohm so we'll have the value across that resistor oh, across that resistor on the screen here in millivolts so i'm going i'm going to bring this this will allow me to bring up very very gradually so what i'm simulating here is if you have no connection or a bad connection so there's no current flow so you have a high resistance or a high impedance circuit so there's no current flow at the minute nothing so 
so, so zero, 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 zero. So I'm going to bring this up very, very gradually here. So as we can see, the bulb is not lit. We'll have zero amps. Well, that's in milliamps there. That's uh, 12 milliamps. I'm reading 28 millivolts. So the point of this is that if you measure, use a shunt resistor and measure across it in volts, you get a high reading. So it's readable then, you know, you can, you'll can you see it on a, on a scope or, or, or an ordinary meter, you know. So we'll just bring that up a wee tiny bit further. So that's 0 0.1 of a volt coming out of that. And we're showing 52 millivolts and our bulb still isn't lit it's not even glowing but we're getting a we're seeing something there you know so if you had a a, a bad connection you you know you'll maybe see this if it wasn't open so if it's open circuit completely no current's going to flow but if you have a bad circuit a bad connection and if you put your voltmeter on that you'll see 0.2 of the volts you know, so you'd probably think maybe, oh, it's just a, f a ghost voltage or a floating voltage or whatever. But we're seeing a lot of millivolts there. So we'll bring it up to, there's half a volt. And our bulb still isn't lit. We'll bring it a wee bit further. There's a volt. So we're up to 116 millivolts here. So that's well readable on a, on a scope or as you can see there the number it's a good big number you know so whatever value of resistors you have in here you know it's going to dictate what you read here but uh, this is just over an ohm it's like 1.1 ohm so it's not exactly an ohm resistors will have tolerance and it'll change with heat and all sorts of jazz so it's you know it's not super accurate but it's probably accurate enough you know so we're going to go up to, uh, we're on the voltage now, 1.5 volts, and the wee light is starting to very, very dim, just a wee glimmer at 1.5 volts. So this thing here is reading the, the, the current for me in milliamps, and that's reflected here, and that's why that's a wee bit higher, it's just because that's just over an ohm and we'll go on a wee bit further and you can see the light starting to shine at four amps and our value is getting higher and higher so what we can do is we can scope this so just change it over to the scope there just to just to show you so if I wind that up very slow and that's a super long time base there on that, I'll just bring it up a wee bit. Oh, we're on the voltage now. So you can see it going up there. And the wee light slating. So, that's just a demonstration of that you can graph across your, your shunt resistor with a scope. So, what you could use this for then is if you had a break in the wire and stuff like like what I said earlier on, and you you did like a wiggle test and you had it run on the scope, you'll see a, a you know a fluctuation on the scope or some sort of graphing device, you know. And you could use just an ordinary voltmeter and look at the numbers, but uh, the whole purpose of this is you can measure very very low current. So, as I say, there's that showing there, and the bulb isn't lighting. But, yeah, we've, we've got it there, you know. So, anyway, that's a wee bit more on that uh, shunt resistor, where you might, you might have a use for it in a, an application such as that. But, generally speaking, that's the, the whole idea. So, um, if you're going to put more, more current through it, this here will only take about uh, a quarter of an amp. So... Uh, I am running it, you know, over its over its rating here, but uh, yeah, 
So if we keep the voltage level, it's, it's fine. So uh, it's only pulling 0.2, what is that? Just less than 0.2 of an amp. So that's about its maximum rating. But uh, with all, all three together, uh, maybe increases that rating a wee bit. But uh, they're only uh, three watts, those resistors. So anyway, that's a wee bit more than that. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, maybe give you a bit of inspiration of uh, a couple of wee things you could do uh, with your normal tools. And I made that for nothing, like, you know, that was just things I had to learn about. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, all the best and bye bye.